at their uh, commission deal, like is there a way in they're going to start no more the prizes for the year? So there's been a tournament going on for four months, and then after that they're going to do a barbecue, and everybody who comes is invited, whether it's your first time or not. So they're going to have free hot dogs, hamburgers, things like that. Um, it should be a pretty nice time. It's pretty good to spread out there. What time is the weigh in? 11.15. Okay. Um, I'm figuring the fibbers are going to do their weigh in about 12 o'clock. Um, yeah. This will be pretty, probably 40, 50 people probably in the tournament, I think. Uh, it's coming Saturday, depending on the weather. It's supposed to be a little drizzle, so I might cut it down. But. So at 11.15, they're starting doing the regular uh, weigh in, and after that, Sometime when that gets done, the fibbers will just kind of move down. Where they are, there's a little diagonal. It goes, the leg goes down to a little smaller part where they're going to be fishing. We'll just kind of move down to, if you're looking at the water, we move to the right. It's not going to be so crowded that I won't be there. And we'll just say, hey, we're going to go down there and weigh our own fish. So we'll weigh our own fish for uh, the fibbers tournament just down there. We'll do that about 12 o'clock. That'll still allow us plenty of time to come back and have hot dogs and hamburgers. So, um, any questions on some of the rules there? I got a question. Is that like a half a mile long? It's, um, I would say it's a little closer to maybe a mile. It's it's three miles around it. Huh? It's three miles around it. I think I heard four. But, um, it, Where's? On, on the electric boat, okay, you hear, this is, um, this is where you're going to launch from. This is down here at the dam. If you're in electric boat fishing down here, which is going to be the deeper area, um, it's going to take you 20 minutes to get back here. The boats are not quick. So, you know, at 10, 30 or so, you might want to be heading back if you're that far away. But you'll figure out how, you know, how fast the boats go. But don't think, you know, you can fish 11 o'clock and be back in 15 minutes. You won't so you're going to walk. I'm going to just go in real quick. <laughs> And some of the, hey Rick, yeah. is the lake way in at the launch ramp? It's a little bit as you, I was just saying, as you were, as you're bringing your boat back to where you took it from, from the dock area, to the left, it's going to be in this area over here. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, By the restroom. To where you're going to do the weigh in. The, the boat rentals are right here, right over here is where we're going to do the weigh in. And there's a little strip over on this side where they do shore fishing. They don't have much shore fishing on this lake. It's really a little strip here. And in the summertime, there's a little dock over here that you can fish from. But mostly, it doesn't have a lot of shore access. But um, you read anything about trout fishing, you want to use really light line. Two pounds, four pounds at the very most. Um, the way. The simplest way to catch fish here is with this little sinking bobber, a little swivel. The lake's pretty clear, so I have maybe a three foot leader here. And then the actually simplest way is put a treble hook on here and power bait. That's, that's, that's the easiest way to catch fish. Okay? The only disadvantage is you have the treble hook going down the trout's throat, and it's a little harder to get it out. But, um, when I take kids out or stuff like that, or um, I see somebody fishing and they have kids and they haven't done well and I'm done for the day, I tell them what to do. I give them jars of bait, you know, and just say, do this, you know. So this is the number one way to catch fish there. This is the easiest thing to do. Take your uh, jar bait and uh, this is a glitter. This is a really good color right here. Kind of make it into a little more of a worm shape versus a ball. It's kind of useful. Go ahead. Is that a, I can't see it from here, but do you have a bead in between that? Uh, I do so have a little bead. Oh. Yeah. And that just, you know, it just takes a little shock, you know, from takes a little uh, noise. You know, hitting on your knot. Yeah. You know. And be sure you put your sinking bobber in the right way. If you reverse it, then you're going to be pounding <laughs> it out and the water's going to be, when, you're, when it's floating on the surface, you're going to put it in the wrong way. Be sure it's filled up. This is just the easiest way. I have a um, four pound leader. I put on my reels what my line is, and this is 
four pound leader, four pound regular test line, and um, I filled it up on uh, November of last year, my main line. And then I only used a two pound, <coughs> I used a two pound bandage for the floor part of the line. So that's the number one easiest way to catch fish. <laughs> but you can't use power bait if you well, enter the Mission Viejo. Not right? if you're in the tournament. Okay. But if you're just doing fibbers, then okay. that's the easiest way to do it. I'm clear. Okay. <laughs> you're sort of we're going to feel your water. But just fun. listen. No, you can't. You can't use power bait. Kill it. Okay. This is my favorite way to fish right here. Um, oh, I'm going to change something. I meant to bring it. I had filleted out about a two and a half, maybe three pound trout a month ago. And it had worms in there this long, fast worms. They, were, they weren't digested, obviously. They were bit up, you know. So there were bass fishermen that had lost their worms that the trout were eating. I had worms. four plastic worms, oh. as long as up to four inches. Did you and plastic worms? Three <laughs> inches, maybe even five inches. Wow. And I'm splaying them out, I'm looking, you know, I'm cutting that, I'm cutting that this fish up, and I'm looking at that, and there was four of these big plastic worms in there. So here we are with a typical trout worm. These are three inches. These things were four, yes, they were, yeah, they were five inches east. This, this is, they were the size of the white ball up there. So I'm going to start thinking, I'm going to start putting on a bigger worm than this. But um, this is what I like to fish here. This is a line from Berkeley, I think it's called Nano. It's kind of like a little bit of a, a power line, like a power pro, like a spectro line. And I like using this. And I put a little tiny bead there. You got your swivel. Um, you know, I like this is a seven and a half foot rod. I like it, you know, even though my boat's only 10 feet. <laughs> you still have times where you want to get around the anchor and stuff like that. And I had these rods when I had my kayak, and it was 14, it was 14 feet under my boat. So, um, anyhow, this is, this is how I fish most of the time, <coughs> right here. And one little key here is your little tiny wire hooks. These are little owner mosquito hooks. I think these are number eights. Um, but you gotta think really small. If you want to do a treble hook, you can do a 20, <coughs> 22, 24. You can't, just a really small little treble hook. So um, this here is, I'm just, I'm usually not going all the way to the bottom. I'm going to cast this out and do a real slow retreat. And um, one other quick thing, why this bobber works so well here is because a lot of the grass, most of the grass down there is, is like this. It's, it's just pitched on the bottom this way. You'll see it because there'll be a lot of uh, bass in there spawning. But so you kind of have this little bead and it'll go into the grass and then your bait all the way down here. It might be you know, six inches above the line or it's going to be caught in. So that little bit of a floating bobber will get caught on the top of the grass and your, your bait is above it. So sometimes if you just use this outfit, you're going to just plow right into, through the grass. This little weight's going to plow through the grass and your bait's going to be in there here. So that's why that little bobber works so well there. What was the line in Well, um, this is called, I think it's, it's a nano, Berkeley Nano, and it's kind of like, say, like a trade line. I just, I don't ever change this one. Um, yeah, this was 02, but I failed school. Is it two pound? This is, this is, uh, this is four pound. My main line is four pound, and um, my fluorocarbon is two pound vanish. That nano, is, if you get 12 pound test, it's 2 pound diameter. I just use for uh, foil carving this little vantage. You know, it's uh, uh, this is probably eight or ten dollars, but I can use this for uh, several years old. Um, Rick 
This is their last stop. Okay. As the water is starting to get warm, um, I'll go over the lake and smell that stuff a little bit. This is your um, basic little drop shot in here. 